Hello and welcome to this tutorial, where I will show you how to run UMods. There are a lot of Unreal Tournament add-ons in the UMod format. The advantages of this format is that it is easy to install and uninstall. It is especially the option to uninstall that I think is important to have. Unfortunately, the option to use UMods are only integrated in the CD-ROM version, but nowadays most people buy Unreal Tournament from GOG or Steam, so I will show you how to make UMods work if you have a downloaded version. I will use Steam as an example, but it will work just as well with GOG. I have installed Unreal Tournament, but I have not launched it yet. Find the folder where Steam has installed the game. We are going to need the installation path later. Start by downloading the registry fix from my Google Drive, and then download the UMods. You can find the link for my Google Drive in my doobly-doo. As you might have noticed, the Google Drive is compressing the files into zip files before downloading. Windows 10 can uncompress zip files without any external programs, but I prefer to use a free program called WinRAR. It can uncompress all kinds of files, including zip. When your downloads are complete, then unzip the UMods. They have not been assigned any icons yet, since Windows does not know this file format. Let's fix that. Start by unzipping the registry fix file. You have three different fixes to choose from. Right click on the registry file associated with the program you installed Unreal Tournament with, and choose Edit. Make sure the registration path matches your Unreal Tournament installation path. My game is installed with Steam on the C drive, so in this case the path is correct. Close Notepad and launch the registration file. Windows now know which program UMods belongs to. They have not been assigned any icons yet. You will probably need to restart your computer for that, but you can double click to run them now. In some cases, you have to copy and paste the installation path for your Unreal Tournament into the UMods destination folder, but otherwise, they should work flawlessly. I will install all the bonus packages, and then I will run the game to see if everything works as intended. I see the assault pack in the mod menu, and I can see some fixes in the player menu. So the mods are installed and working. Let's see if the uninstall function works. Close the game and go to your Unreal Tournament system folder, and then run the setup exe file. And there they are. You can uninstall each mod individually if you like. But I'm not gonna do that, since I am about to install the game. At this point, your UMod files may have been assigned icons. If they haven't, it will help to restart your computer. That was it. You now know how to install UMods for Unreal Tournament. I was almost done editing this video, but then I noticed something is missing compared to this CD-ROM version of Unreal Tournament. Both Steam and GOG shows Unreal Tournament with the Chaos mod, but it is missing, and so are a lot of maps and the Rocket Arena map. When people are buying a Game of the Year edition of Unreal Tournament, they are expecting to get the complete game, like this. Without the missing mods, you are missing several features, including the game type King of the Hill, which is actually really fun. Besides the complete game, I also want to give you the best experience with the game. Therefore, I will show you how to update the game to support modern computers so you can run the game with high definition textures. Oh, and by the way, if you like this kind of content, please leave a like and subscribe. Okay, let's continue. Start by downloading the latest patch. I will also download the hotfix since I use OpenDL due to my NVIDIA graphic card. Launch the old Unreal UT patch. Copy and paste the installation path for your Unreal Tournament into the patch's destination folder. Do not run the game yet. Unzip the hotfix and move the file into your Unreal Tournament system folder and let it replace the old file. Now it's time for downloading the high resolution textures. I will choose the lower res LE version, which is 3 GB large. It took me almost 40 minutes to download, so there is time to go for a short walk. When it is done downloading, 
Unzip it and move the texture folder to your Unreal Tournament folder. And let them overwrite the old textures. Now for the high resolution Unreal skins. When the download has finished, unzip it and move the two folders to your Unreal Tournament folder. If you have a graphics card that is compatible for DirectX rendering, I would recommend you to download the DirectX 11 render. I have an NVIDIA Quattro K4200, so mine is not compatible, but I will show you how to install DirectX 11 anyway. I am told that ATI and Intel graphic cards are capable for DirectX rendering, and NVIDIA cards should be used with the OpenGL renderer, which is integrated into the UT patch we have already installed. To install the driver, unzip it and move the files in the Unreal Tournament and in the Common folder to your Unreal Tournament system folder. If you are going to use the DirectX 11 renderer, then I will recommend you to download the normal and height maps, which works with the DirectX 11 render. You install it by unzipping it and then move the texture folder to your Unreal Tournament folder. And now you are done installing stuff for Unreal Tournament. It is completely updated and functions as a complete CD-ROM version. All that is left is the setup part. And I would like to go over some of my setup recommendations with you. Most of the settings I will go through are already set if you use my pre-edited ini files. Before starting the game, and while you still have your Unreal Tournament folder open, go to the system folder and open your Unreal Tournament ini file. Scroll down to Engine Game Engine and change Cache Size Mix from 4 to 128. This change has already been made if you use my pre-edited ini files. This change will allow Unreal Tournament to use a larger amount of memory and thus run better. However, an old recommendation says it is not recommended to set it higher than half of your total amount of memory. In fact, 128 is probably way more than Unreal Tournament needs and way less than half of your computer's available memory. I hope to have hit a nice golden middle with 128. If I followed the advice myself with half of one's memory, I would have to write 16384, which is a ridiculously large amount of memory compared to the original 4. When you launch the game, in the first time configuration, tick on Show All Devices. Now all drivers show up, and you should be able to find the DirectX 11 render if you installed it. I will choose OpenGL. Raw input is recommended for modern hardware and modern versions of Windows. My computer is 8 years old and I run Windows 10, but raw input is still the best choice for me. I have an even older laptop lying around somewhere and it can't run raw input. I have tried. You have to experiment and find out what works best for you. This is how it is with most settings. I give you my recommendation based on my experiences with my computer and on what I have read online. Begin by setting your resolution to something that looks better on your screen. Then tick on Override GUI Scaling and resize the window. Now tick on Override Font Scaling and reduce the in-game text by moving it a little bit to the left. If you want a different color theme, you can choose one in the GUI Skin drop-down menu. Then set the frame rate limit at 120 and close the window. Go to Options, Preferings and Game. Choose your weapon hand. Usually I play with a weapon hidden, but with the Chaos mod there are new weapons that I am not very familiar with. And when I play online it also happens that I get a weapon I have never seen before. That's why I prefer to be able to see the weapon. Make sure dodging is ticked on. Go to Input and change the mouse sensitivity. You have to play around and adjust it a few times before you find the adjustment that suits you best. I know from experience that 1.5 suits me well. Tick off Translocator Dual Button Weapon Switch so you don't switch weapons by accident while translocating. In Network, choose Cable or LAN. I don't think it makes much of a difference. I haven't experienced any. Then go to Controls and customize it to what you prefer. If you use my pre-edited ini files, some recommendations will already be set. Use them as inspiration and make them your own. Some of the presets will have been changed 
by the patch. For example, under weapons, the next weapon key should have been mouse wheel up. Scroll down to console key and set it to the key right below escape. On European keyboards, that key is called backslash. There are a lot of new hotkey options from the assault bonus pack. Some may be quite interesting for a server admin. Go to the heads up display tab and reduce the hot size a bit and change the cursor to the one you like the best. Then go to weapons and tick off the auto change weapon option. Now go to player setup, change your player name and customize your character. We are approaching the final settings. Only a few adjustments left now. If you use an OpenGL driver, go to tools and choose system console, write preferences. This will open the advanced options. Go to rendering and choose your driver. Set volumetric lightning to true. This is already set if you use my pre-edited ini files. This is not necessary to do with the DirectX 11 render since it is on as default. But it is worth doing and I will show you why by showing you the difference between having it on or off. It switches the fog effect on and off. The advanced options can also be used for setting up key bindings. This is where you would want to customize the key bindings from your pre-edited user ini file or from within the user ini file itself. This is the demo manager. You use it to record your games, but it probably won't work without you making a minor adjustment. To make it work, you need to create a folder with a short path, like this. No spaces, no numbers, or special characters. Paste the path to the new folder into the demo manager's saved recording path. Now it should work. Well, that was a lot to go through, but we have finally come to my last piece of advice, which is start a practice session and add some of the new mutators, especially the HD mutators. If you use the pre-edited ini files, start a practice session with the Chaos UT mutator and try your hand at the preset hotkeys. Experiment and learn how to use them. However, not all of them are equally necessary to keep. Feel free to replace them with your own. Happy gaming!